Hi everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, and what I would like to do with you in this video is show you how to use a geological cross-section to make inferences about a region's history. That's what I want you to be able to do in this video. So uh, what that means is, can we figure out what happened in a region over the course of geological time, ancient time? Can we figure out what happened based on what rocks and layers are beneath our feet? Does the order of them tell us anything? What they're made of? How they're angled or positioned? What about chunks like this uh, pink stuff? Do, can we tell anything about what occurred there based on that? So that's the idea here, is looking at a cross-section like this one and figuring out what happened uh, in the geological past. Now, in order to help us do that, I want to refer to a document uh, that's available on my website, and I also gave it to you in class. Uh, it's this document. And uh, what this document is, it's the importance of layers, not just for cakes. And it has some examples to start with, just to kind of illustrate the concept that we're, I'm going to uh, uh, explain to you right now. So here's a great example. Every day my dad reads a newspaper. When he's done, he places it on the coffee table. He does this every day for one week. Now we can use the books on the, down here to kind of to serve uh, as newspapers, but we can use this as a visual. So if we imagine that my dad has you know, a newspaper down here, he slaps it on the table, and then as the week goes by, he puts one paper on top of the other. So if you look at the stack of books or newspapers, which of these newspapers are older? The ones on the bottom or the ones on the top? Well, it's probably those books that are on the bottom. Dad put those down first. And as he lays the papers down, they are younger and younger until we get to the present day right here. And this is how most rock layers are formed. This is called the law of superposition, that the layers of rocks on the bottom are older and the layers of rocks toward the top are younger. However, I want to point out that there might be some violations to this rule. So if we look over here, here we have some examples. These are glass jars in which someone has poured some sand. And so the sand on the bottom, in general, the sand on the bottom is older. The sand on the top is a little younger because it's been poured last. But you can have violations to this law. So for instance, you see someone has taken a poker and they've, they've pierced down into these layers of sand. And so we have some layers that have been punched down into other layers. Or if we look over here, not all the layers are perfectly flat. Some of them are blobby. There's some that have fatter areas and then there's thinner areas. So there might be a few violations to this law of superposition. Uh, but in general, rocks on the bottom are older, rocks on the top are going to be younger. So um, let's go ahead and look at a few examples, um, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll do some sort of practice problems. So if we look at this cross section of the Grand Canyon, so this is very simple and, and easy to understand. There's rocks on the bottom, there's rocks on the top, and they're all horizontal. And uh, so in this case, we can, uh, we can assume with some pretty reasonable certainty that the rocks on the bottom are old, and as we go up, the rocks are younger. But also, the Grand Canyon has been cut away. So what was more recent? Were the layers laid down first, or did we get this big gaping hole? Well, it was probably the layers that were laid down first, and then they were cut away by the Colorado River. So in another uh, activity, we're actually going to talk a little bit more about the Grand Canyon. But this is kind of a simple example. If we look over here at 2, uh, these layers are sort of interesting. Do you notice anything kind of interesting about these layers that's different from these? Well, the big thing I notice is that they're curved. They're actually bent a little bit. So it looks as though these layers were laid down oldest to youngest, but then they bent. They were bent. And uh, the reason that we know that is because of how sedimentary rock is laid down. So we'll talk about that in a moment. These ones are actually bent. You might notice that fault there, too. These rocks are really weird because these rocks are, they have layers, but they're all accordion buckled up. They're all squished. And so maybe something, maybe the layers were laid down, and then after they were laid down, they got squished together and they were buckled. So we'll look more at what that might be going on there. Here's an interesting one. These rocks are pretty straight, right? They're pretty flat, so it looks like they were probably laid down straight. But then there was a crack that showed up right here. And it looks like the right side of this formation slid down. It actually got, got pulled or, or it fell down compared to the left one. The left one, it looks like, stayed put. The right one slid down. And so we don't always see a perfect older to younger 
uh, layering. Sometimes you have other funny things going on. You have bending and, and you have squashing, you have faults. There's other things that can happen here. So let's, uh, let's get a few things out of the way as far as different types of rock and what do the different types of rock say about how they were formed. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go a little bit out of order here. Um, we just talked about the law of superposition, that the rocks on the bottom are usually older and the ones on the top are usually younger. Well, that's the reason why we, we have that law is because most rocks are what's called sedimentary. So sedimentary rocks are rocks that are deposited as a result of water. So water has, uh, you know, maybe um, a river uh, eroded a bunch of rock sediments, and then those sediments floated out to sea, and those, those sediments fall down, and they form at the bottom of the sea, and then those form rocks later on. And so we call those rocks sedimentary, right? If, if a rock is laid down in the water, it forms these nice, perfect horizontal rows because it's being poured down in the water. So if you imagine taking a water bottle, filling it with sand, and shaking it up, and then letting it sit still, that sand is going to form a nice straight layer on the bottom of that, uh, that water bottle. So that's what we call sedimentary rock, rock that's formed in water. Igneous rock, on the other hand, is rock that's formed as a result of volcanic activity, which means magma and lava. So uh, if we're talking about igneous rock, does that really need to form horizontally, or can it form in other ways? Well, it turns out that igneous rock, it can spill out onto the surface like magma, or like lava, but it can also push up through the layers, uh, in or and it can cut across layers. So igneous rock does not have to be horizontal. It can actually cut across layers, kind of like these these pokes that we saw going through our sand. Then maybe that's like igneous rock pushing through those layers. Um, and then the last one we can talk about is metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock is basically rock that has been heated and squeezed, uh, or at least one or the other. So maybe this is an example of metamorphic rock that has been laid down and then squashed so that it buckles and forms these wave shapes. So these are the different kinds of rock, and the kind of rock we're looking at can uh, t tell us what happened in the history at that time, in the geological history. So let's look at some simple examples of geological cross-sections in order to figure out what, what order were they laid down. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do here, I'm going to try to use my, uh, my screen record here uh, in order to do a little bit of writing, hoping that, that uh, my screen recorder captures this. Um, but what I have here is some geological, a geological cross-section. We see they're labeled by letter B, E, C, D, and A. Now the law of superposition tells us that B is oldest, E is a little younger, and then C, D, and A. But I want you to think about this for a minute. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very easily on your, your screen, um, but notice that uh, B has these little stars next to it, and you might be wondering what those are. Well, if you ever see those stars, what that means is that the, the layer outside of this has been melted. So E has been melted by B. Now what kind of formation is going to melt something? Sedimentary, deposition, or igneous rocks? Well, probably igneous rocks. Those are magma or lava. So what those little stars tell us, I'm teaching you this right now, what those little stars tell us is that B melted E. Now in order for that to be true, E must have already been there. We must have already had E, and B pushed up through E. B must be igneous, and E is some other kind of rock. So E actually existed first, and then B pushed up through it. There's a name for B. B is called an intrusion, because that igneous rock pushed up through E. The other thing that we might notice is that the top of E is jagged. And then notice how B is actually cut off right there. B has almost been decapitated. It's been cut off. Well, what the, could that tell us? Well, what that really means, if you see an uneven layer like this, what it almost always means is that erosion has occurred. So E first existed, and then you had B, and then there was erosion. But then, now look at this. C, D, and A are flat. They're perfectly flat, which means that they're what's called sedimentary. Now, do you remember what I said you need to have sedimentary rock? What environment do you need for a sedimentary rock to form? Well, what you really need is water. So uh, C, D, and E, uh, and, and A here, C, D, and A, were formed in the presence of water. These are sedimentary rocks. We know that because they're perfectly horizontal, and I bet 
that C is limestone and D and A might be sandstone or, or um, uh, uh, slate or some other kind of rock that was probably laid down uh, sedimentary some, or shale, right? some other kind of sedimentary rock. So really, what is the order of the layering in our rocks? Well, it's probably uh, E, B, C, D, and A. So that's probably the order that's, that this has taken place. Um, but I think it's also important to add a few other things here. Note that E came first, and then B, and then there was erosion. So B intruded, and after B, there was erosion. So uh, B intruded. And then after that happened, we had erosion. All right, so we have some erosion that occurred here uh, between this, this area, B, E, and C. And so this is kind of what we would say for this geological cross-section. E, B, and then uh, B intruded, and then there was erosion, and then C, D, and A. And there's a name for what we call C, D, and A. They were formed by deposition. So this is what we would say has occurred in this example. Now if we look down here at the next example, uh, we see a bit of a different situation. We see A down here, and then C up there, and then B is cutting right across the middle of them. Well, the law of superposition suggests that A is oldest, C is youngest or younger, and then B is probably the youngest. Um, however, I'm not so sure about A and C. Notice that C has been melted. C has these little stars on it. That means A melted C. C has been melted. So what that means is that first we had C, and then A intruded, and then after that B intruded also. Um, so we have first we have C that already existed, then A intruded, and then B intruded. So the order here from oldest to youngest is actually C, A, B. C was there, A showed up, and then B intruded. There's a name for B. Depending on the angle of B, this looks like what's called a dike. So if you have igneous rock that pushes up across layers like that, that's what that's called. If it's horizontal, if it's between layers, it's called a sill. So it's probably C, A, and then B. I'll show you one more, one or two more examples, uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll uh, cut you loose. So let's look at one like this. I'll zoom in a little here. Let's look at this example. So we see that there's all, these are colored. That's nice. Um, let's kind of figure out what might have happened in this example. Let's see if my screen works here. All right, so we have, uh, we, have, we have P, K, M, S, and X. So these are all horizontal, and so it seems like that's a reasonable suggestion that that's the layer that those went in. That's what it looks like is going on with that. Um, but notice that R is cutting across all those layers. So after X, we must have had R. R pushed up. So this is an igneous intrusion. R has pushed up through these layers. Now these layers, because these are nice and horizontal, they must have been laid down uh, by water in a watery environment. So what we would say is that P, K, M, S, and X were laid down by deposition, and R is an intrusion. The next thing that we see uh, is that after R has pushed up through, you can notice that X is jagged. Notice how X is, is wavy and jagged. That must mean that erosion occurred. So this was once exposed to the air. So X got eroded away. It's jagged. So after R pushed up, that means that there was erosion. There's erosion here. And then after that erosion, we have the deposition of B, J, and F. We know that because those are horizontal. Those are deposition. So it looks like that's what's going on here. This one's not too bad because they're all horizontal.
So I hope that this was a little bit helpful in helping you see how to use a geological cross-section to make inferences about a region's history.